All right, you guys, welcome back to the Burley Fishing Channel. I got a special video for you today, one that I've been meaning to make for quite some time. This is a comparison between the Old Town Sportsman, which I have right here, and the Hobie Pro Angler 360. Now, they're not right next to each other, so I apologize for that. I'm in Minnesota. I'm with Sam Moore Media. I mean, this is actually his garage filled with all kinds of hunting and fishing goodies. There's even a couple of boats. There's like freaking three boats hanging around here. Um, but I'm up here in Minnesota filming for Monster Bass, but I had the opportunity to fish out of this because this is his boat. He has the 10 foot six, which I'm gonna show you because I fished out of it for two days straight and he has the 12 footer. So I'm gonna walk you through a comparison of both these boats side by side. We'll do my comparison and walkthrough on the Hobie back at the office. Now, before I get into the comparison and the walkthrough, I just wanna say thank you so much for checking out this video. Thanks for hitting the like button. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for ringing the notification bell. It means a lot to us here at Barely Fishing and we're glad to have you here. So please do all that stuff. Now, let's take a look at this boat. So we have the PDL 10 foot six, so the 106. PDL stands for pedal. And that's because this boat has a pedal drive. Um, I used this boat for two days straight. I used it for fishing smallmouth and Mille Lacs. So I was on some big water and we hit a pond for frogging. So I hit some small water as well. I feel like I get a good feel for how this boat rolls. We're just gonna do a front to back walkthrough. Then I'll give you my opinion on how this boat actually performed. Um, First thing first, get the standard handles. I've seen these in the past. I used to have an Old Town. I really like the Old Town boats. Had handles just like this, same ones on the sides. Not the most heavy duty because it's not molded in, but these are super heavy duty. They will easily handle the weight of this boat. You got your front hatch storage. This pops open like so. You get access to your front hatch. This is dry storage, not waterproof storage, period, the end. Don't believe what anybody tells you. If you have something water sensitive, make sure you put it in a waterproof bag before you put it in there. Moving on, we hit what is the crown jewel of this boat. That is the pedal drive system. It is a prop drive system. That means that this thing spins when you pedal these pedals and you pedal them in a circular motion. The Hobie goes back and forth. This is just like a bicycle. Very comfortable. This is like the horsepower version. It is speedy. This thing is so much faster than a Hobie. It's kind of laughable. Granted, I was in a 10 foot six, didn't have all my gear, but this thing is heckin' fast. I definitely think it's faster than the Hobie. Has a bungee here for some of your stuff and things has a waterproof container right here too this is a great spot for a phone or some other things this was really helpful um, throughout the trip however this is the only handle that you have to pick this thing up this thing doesn't weigh very much but it still weighs more than the hobie drive and this kind of is not a lot of handle for the job i had no problem but that just makes me a little leery if i come to replace that at some point scupper holes you get some um, molded in foot cushioning right here for some grip and some comfort i really like this i do wish it extended a little further but i do like this these pockets are freaking awesome they fit a bag of plastics horizontally they fit a ton of baits um cell phone all kinds of stuff i mean honestly just for generic storage this is the most amount of space i think i've seen in a boat in a long time they will also fit like a 3600 size box vertically they fit all kinds of stuff this is very, very cool. Now this is the second best part about the whole boat. Very, very comfortable seat. The seat is redesigned, tubular with this nice, nice padding. I, again, I was fishing out of the sun up till sundown for two days straight, never had a problem, no discomfort whatsoever, leg pain, back pain, none of that. Very, very, very comfortable. My only gripe is that they're still using these to make the adjustments. These are okay, they don't last forever. I've had these screws pop out a bunch of times on my old, old town. Um, I like that the seat can fold over, that is very cool. That's good for moving some stuff around. Um, and the way that you do the adjustments is very clever. And this, the, my last boat, I had a problem where when you lean back, uh, this part of the seat would pop up. You no longer have that problem. So kudos to you for fixing my biggest gripe with my old, my, pre my previous old town. My new gripe is that because they are using these straps, the seat can fall down like at any time. So a lot of times when you're standing up fishing, you're casting, 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 you don't realize that this has actually fallen. You go to sit down, you sit on the top of the seat. A minor gripe, but it's still a gripe. I don't love that, but very comfortable seat. It's like a nine out of 10, it's a great seat. Once you flip this up, you have some more storage right here. Very ample for things like plastics, uh, you know, sweater, coat, shoes, whatever. Very comfortable, very nice storage. Um, this is just access to the inside of the boat. So you pop this open, that comes up. You gotta undo these straps, but that pops up. And you can get back to the inside of your boat, which is very cool, because that's the rear of your boat. Walking back a little bit, we have the rudder. Now, how do you deploy the rudder? You go ahead and you flip this bar, and the rudder pops out. Um, this rudder is pretty heavy duty. Never had a problem with it. Went through some really thick stuff. Didn't get hung up very much. I like that I'm seeing metal cabling. That's very good. Uh, so overall, no problem. Uh, 
There's usually webbing here, but this wide open storage, this is what I love about the old towns. They don't prescribe things, they don't customize things too much to be used for their product. Everything is very just sort of like open and works well for exactly what you want it to do, and you can make it your excuse me, and you can make it your own. You don't have to use it the way that they intended you to make it. So that's great. Webbing there. I believe this is for mounting accessories. Uh, these four these four bolts right here, something like uh, maybe a power pole or something like that. Two rear-facing rod holders, and then one of my favorite, one of my absolute favorite things about this boat is the forward-facing rod holder. Now, what's a forward-facing rod holder? What is a forward-facing rod holder? A forward-facing rod holder is, let's say I net a fish, I'm fishing a net a fish, I have the fish, I boat the fish, now what do I do with my rod? Well, I can set it down right here, but there's not really a lot of room here for rods. That's another grape that I have. You have to put the rod underneath the seat right here, and then the rod tips travel this direction out in front of the boat, which is fine, but that's what you'd have to do, and that's right in your way. There's not a lot of room in this cockpit because it's only a 10-foot boat. So what do you do? You go ahead and you stick your rod right here. Your rod goes in this direction, and the rod tip goes this way, with the rod tip dangling right up here, meaning you have slack line to unhook your fish and put it back in the water. You also have, if you want to retie your lures, you just set your uh, rod tip right there by your, or your, your rod butt right by your hip inside that forward-facing rod holder, mess with your bait, tie it, pick it up, continue fishing. I had to shout out the person at Old Town that came up with this idea because I totally stole it and put and did the exact same thing in my Hobie, um, put a forward-facing rod holder in. If I ever buy a kayak, the first thing I'll put on is an anchor. The second thing I'll put on is a forward-facing rod holder. It's, the, it's probably the thing that I use the most on my boat daily, it's every 10 minutes probably. Phenomenal. You do have a rod holder with this handy dandy, super heavy duty rubber um, holder, which is great. This is your knob for steering. Uh, this worked pretty darn well. I like that a lot. Um, I believe this is the tension knob, but I kind of need to look that up, meaning I could tighten this so that the, the rudder won't move when the water hits it, or you can loosen it so that it's easier to move. I'm not 100% sure, so if I'm wrong, correct me on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And then we had the gear tracks. Um, this is for mounting things like, in this case, a Ram ball for your electronics, um, for trolling stuff, for whatever it is, your, your phone, whatever it is that you happen to you know, need that for. So these are awesome and they're plastic. I'm glad they're not metal. Um, I think this was definitely the way to go. I love these. I like that they're long um, and they seem to be in the right position. You could definitely use one in the front. I think the 12 footer has one in the front, but I'm not actually 100% sure. Either way, these are phenomenal. All right, so I am not actually in the garage. Um, I'm actually waiting for Jeff. We're gonna go in the river. I'm gonna put in right over there. And I uh, figured while I was waiting for Jeff, I would just fin finish sort of the Hobie half um, of this comparison. So I'm gonna give you a front to back walk through the Hobie. We'll do a quick comparison on some of the key features, kind of like what we talked about with that Old Town PDL. Now again, this one's a little more tricked out. Got the fish finder, got all the accessories and all the stuff, all the things. Uh, anchor, you know, electronics, blah, 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 blah. I totally get that. This boat is also 14 feet. That makes a huge difference. And I'm trying to keep that in mind, you know, as I'm doing my comparison. As I said, for a 10 and a half foot boat, that little PDL Old Town handled like a really, really well. Very impressed. Um, but I, again, I'll do a quick walk through here and then I'll kind of wrap it up with sort of a quick comparison. Again, my impressions, I've had this boat for about a year and a half. And, uh, you know, I only had the old time for two days, but I've been kind of angry for a while. I actually had an old time, old time before, so I don't know. For what it's worth, I'll give you my, uh, my perspective. Uh, but let's do a quick walk through here and again, compare some of those key features. Um, so starting in the front, uh, I know this seems so small, but if you're a kayak angler and you've been around for a long time, you're planning on keeping your boat for a while, having like a the most heavy duty handles, a pretty big deal. Very, very, very heavy duty handle. Uh, one of the most heavy duty. I think this is actually more HD than sort of uh, the ones that are molded into the body. I know that sounds insane, but once you grip this thing, this is a heavy, heavy boat. Uh, and so, yeah, this actually means quite a bit. One thing I want to call out while I'm talking about the heavy port, the, like the weight of the, the, the old town or the, the Hobie, it's like 200 pounds or something like that, 250 pounds. I don't know. It, it, it's a heavy, heavy, heavy boat. Um, it is not light. That's actually probably one of the biggest drawbacks um, of the Hobie is the weight. You'll notice that uh, I do have two wheels installed back here um, just so that I can cart this darn thing around. It is, and that's kind of a requirement. If you're by yourself and you don't have some kind of wheel, you're you're gonna regret it because you won't get where you're going or you're gonna ruin the bottom of your boat dragging it every single time that you go somewhere. Uh, so 
it's a heavy boat that that is i'm gonna put the right out there right now if weight is a problem for you this is not the boat for you especially the 14 foot it is not a light boat but it's kind of like you know one of those river creatures it's like a hippo once they're in the water they're like a ballerina and that's kind of that's kind of what you're dealing with here you want to be a ballerina you can only do it in the water on land I don't know what you are, but you're not a ballerina. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the front hatch. Um, one of the things I said with the Old Town is that um, it's basically just an open port, right? Yes, it has like kind of a waterproof, you know, pretty well sealed uh, front hatch lid. Um, this is like one of the major points of departure, right? You can see there's like a rubber gasket that runs along the whole outside of this. And there's another one that runs along here. Now this is not 100% waterproof. If you flip the boat, you're gonna have a problem, but it's very, it's very water, very waterproof. And as you can see, this lid goes all around the outside. Someone's coming in on an ATV here. So still waiting. All right, hopefully they're far enough away. But as you can see, there's a heavy duty lid that run the or a lip that runs all the way on the outside of this hatch. Keeps the water out very well. But the other thing is like, there's actually an insert. This bin is like an insert that goes inside, uh, sits inside there and keeps all of this off the bottom of the boat. So even when water does get in there, it really has no way to get inside of that little, that little drop in bin. It's a massive upgrade. It makes a massive difference. It really, really does. Um, and it's also gigantic. So I have my PFD in there, but I've got all my emergency stuff, some camera gear, emergency paddle, sunscreen, extra line, like sunglasses. I mean, that thing is completely jammed um, at all times. And, and it is like a, the, my, my main storage, um, but it's also main waterproof store. So I, I actually really huge fan. Um, moving back a little bit further we have the gear tracks so those two gear tracks here one on each side um, but then in addition to that you have the Hobie H rail so this is a very customizable um, system and they sell components like this where you can bolt on whatever you want this holds one of the Garmin arms and then here comes Jeff uh, but you get cup holders on here and you can unclamp these and basically move them wherever you want which I really really love uh, and you've got those on both sides that is Hobie exclusive and then, uh, What's up, little beach? yeah, it's a cool, I'm not, I'm not filming a video. It's fine. Right. Jeff, you want to finish off this video for us? Uh, yeah. So the, uh, Hobie Pro Angler is a pretty nice boat. You should know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you got the atrial. I mean, honestly, this thing is fantastic. It comes on this box too. This is sold separately. This doesn't come with it. Uh, but it, it really does let you pretty much do whatever it is that you want to do. Anything from mounting electronics to cup holders and everything in between. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about right here. These are actually rod tubes. So as you can see, there are six rod tubes and you can actually store all of your rods along the side of the boat. That is stock, um, but allows you to put six rods in the boat without having anything vertical. That's awesome for traveling. That's awesome when you wanna maybe carry 10 rods. Um, you can actually double up in there if you put everything in rod socks. That was a Christine Fisher uh, pro tip for us that I don't feel like I need, but you could definitely do. So I really like that. Compared to some of the other boats that are in there, like with that old town, I sort of had to have the the butt of the rod inside my seat, right underneath my leg, and then the rod tips are sort of running on around the like running through the outside of the boat. Cool, useful, simple, but just not as good. Honestly, this is a better solution. Again, 14 foot boat versus a 10 foot boat. That's the kind of thing that you're going to get. Um, you still get the uh, foot pads right here, uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the drive for a second. So this is the Hobie 360 uh, drive. Now the whole 360 component means that this bottom piece right here where the fins are can, by turning that handle or this handle, actually turns this whole rudder, I only have one hand here, you can turn it 360 degrees which is pretty incredible. Um, it's also totally different and you have these things called kick-up fins. So let's say you're going to run into something, your fins just break back and then as you pedal they fix back in place. It's outstanding. It really is the most incredible drive out there. You also have another drop-in bin piece of storage here. Um, very waterproof. Uh, again, drops in so it's not sitting at the bottom of the boat getting wet. Keep all sorts of tools in here. License, keys, emergency food, you know, anything that you could want. More tackle. It's just, it's just better storage. So let's talk about the seat. This is probably the best part about the Hobie. Um, again, this is one of those things on the kayak. You really can't replace, it's hard to upgrade, so you kind of get what you pay for. Um, this is a padded seat right here, but as you can see, it gives a little bit. It's super heavy duty, you get the same thing on the back. 
when you, when you put it down, it stays down. When you put it up, it stays up. That whole bounce back thing is not a problem. You know, arm rests, like foam. I mean, really, you get lumbar lumbar uh, resistance here. I mean, it, it's fully adjustable. The seat can tilt up and down. You can actually pull it completely out and use it as a lawn chair, like when you're camping, which I've done a ton of times. I mean, it really is, in my opinion, the best seat that you can get. I, I really love it. What's going on, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, brother. Um, you know, you got to spend your money somehow, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I got no problem spending my money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on over. You have storage underneath here. There are some straps. I actually just use this gigantic, enormous tub. Um, it's just easy, but a ton of storage underneath. Uh, then you do have pockets on the sides. Uh, right there, you can barely see them because they're hiding behind all those fishing rods. But there's another one there, Elastec, stretchy type deal. I use those basically for trash at this point um, after I'm done eating all my snacks. Uh, there's so much other storage in the boat, you don't really you don't really need much more than that. Um, the deployment for like the rudder, the transducer, um, is all done with these little pull tabs right here. Uh, you just sort of drop it and then you pull it tight, like so, which is really hard to do from on the other side of the boat. But that's how you de deploy everything. You got your uh, skeg and all sorts of other goodies. Um, so super simple. Again, pretty simple. See if you can make more noise. I have not here. Can you... This is why I do this by myself now, guys. Can you help me? Are you joking me? Just get out of here. I, I quit the... He rolls up four feet from me, and then he's like, "Hi, I want to make all the noise that I can." Yep, still jiggling away. <laughs> uh, the other thing is, we kind of talked about this. One of the biggest sort of um, kind of trademark differences between the Hobie. It's still just shaking loose. You know, I don't even think he's actually doing anything. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I hate you so much. Um, one of the biggest trademark differences between like the design of the old town, the old town and the design of the Hobie is that the Hobie is designed to be complete. You buy things that are complete. Um, you're gonna use it the way that they've designed it and intended it versus, I mean, there's some customization, but you know, versus the old town is kind of a blank canvas. Um, you sort of, you can add any accessories that you want. They're not too specific about the way things are being, are intended to be used. Um, and, and you can see that with the Atrial, right? Like this accessory, there's nothing else that can clip onto this. This, these are the only accessories that you can do. Now, yes, they have this sort of universal kit and you can screw your own stuff into it. That's fine. They do have these more generic tracks for things like the Yak Attack uh, camera arm that I have here. But you know, really, again, this is like a system that's designed to work one way and, and very specifically to work the way that it's designed. So I, it works for me and I really like it, but like this bucket is great. That's where I keep all my terminal tackle and where I put lures when I'm done using them. So like, but that's really what it's designed for. So that, that's a little bit of a, I'll call it a drawback potentially. But I mean, if you just like buying accessories and have them work perfectly, yeah, that's a good option for you. And there's Jeff. He is one person hauling a 275 pound loaded like down vessel yeah, it's probably 300 pounds at this it point it's got to be um all right so we're going to step back a little bit further you have a ton of open space here this is your rear hatch access to the inside of the boat um just standard nothing really uh crazy with that it's just if you need to get to the back of the boat that's the way that you can do it uh this is the hobie h crate again one of those accessories that's designed to work specifically with this boat um but it works wonderfully uh but you do have a huge open space back here it's it's again a 14 foot boat compared to a 10 and a half foot it's just bigger but it's simple it's large and it's a little bit uh modular which i you know again i really appreciate um there are some rod holders back here uh should you decide to use them even without the crate uh, which does have four rod holders in the back um, I actually just use mine for my net. It's kind of perfect. Um, and then they do have, again, this, this, you can, it's a Hobie specific accessory, but they do have basically a place for you to put an anchor. Now this is supposed to be, uh, there's supposed to be another wheel over there in the front. I actually happen to use that little tiny wheel, uh, for my anchor to deploy it like so. Um, I love this. That's an anchor wizard. If you're wondering, that is a freaking awesome accessory. Everyone should have one. Um, then you get another really, really, really heavy duty uh, handle here in the back. And then it is that atrial. So if you want to mount more accessories, you certainly do so. Um, it's just, it is just, it's really wonderful. Overall, this boat is wider uh, than the Old Towns. So it doesn't matter what the length is, it's just a wider boat. Um, in my opinion, it's more stable, but both boats are incredibly stable. Uh, and they're just, they're designed differently. They have different purposes. They have different drives. I think the biggest differentiators are the Hobie 360 drive, the seat, 
uh, the drop-in waterproof type storage, and then the dimensions. I think those are the biggest differences overall. Yes, there are other things, but like as somebody, and the weight. So as somebody who, you know, sort of like your generic, you know, not engineer type angler, those are the things you're gonna notice almost immediately. Um, but again, I'll do a quick wrap up uh, back in Sam's garage. So that's it. All in all, my impression of the Old Town Sportsman line is that it is definitely a value. Like for the amount of money you're spending, you're getting a whole lot of boat, a whole lot of boat. The pedal drive, I'd say is like a seven out of 10. It can be a little bit difficult. There's like a clip right here when you have to like deploy it. You can see that there's a little clip right here. So you have to sort of jerk it. Getting it right now, you have to jerk it out of there um, to get it down. That's a little bit frustrating. It's easier sometimes than others, but that kind of bothered me a little bit. But it was very fast. Um, it's considerably faster than the Hobie. There's no question about it. If there was ever a race, the person running the Hobie would definitely lose. Um, the Hobie is more like a torque type system where you have a lot of power behind it, but it's not moving quite as quickly. This is a very quick boat. Now the Hobie 360 is way more nimble. You saw how the 360, um, the 360 uh, components work where you can just basically turn your motor any direction. It is hands down the most maneuverable boat out there, period the end it's not close if you want to reposition your boat the same way with this old town you have to do a big circle or you'd have to back up you know in reverse back yourself up and then try and finagle yourself using you know the rudder but like you're not you're not able to turn unless there's water moving past the rudder versus the hobie 360 if i want to just move my boat completely sideways i turn my 360 drive to face this direction and i start pedaling and i just my whole boat moves this way it's incredible. It has a lot of nice features. One of the things that is a big miss next to the Hobie Vantage seat, which I would definitely miss if I was in an old town boat, um, is the front hatch storage. This front hatch is interior boat storage. It is not 100% waterproof. Um, I put things that are water sensitive inside of the front hatch of my Hobie all of the time because it's an elevated bin that is basically just waiting for you to put, you know, things in it that could or may get wet. Now, if you flip the boat, you, you're definitely gonna have a problem. So there's always a risk there. But if I was gonna put anything inside of this boat, even like a snack, I would put it inside of, of a waterproof uh, bag just to make sure that it won't get wet because there's a lot of water just kind of inside kayaks. It kind of, you know, it, it just, that's a fact of fishing a plastic boat. There's just some, some amount of water. It's not a lot, but some amount of water inside the boat. I don't have to worry about that with the Hobie bin, the way that it's structured, and it's a ton of space. But overall, I was a big fan of the Old Town. Uh, thanks to Sam and Sam Moore Media for letting me use this boat for this shoot. I had a ton of fun fishing it, and I would recommend that if you are, like my, my overall recommendation, honestly, my overall opinion, if you are okay spending the money, I would say get the Hobie. It, it weighs more, fact. Um, but it's way more maneuverable with that 360 drive. Um, and I really, really, really like some of the components like the Vantage seat, like the bin, like the center console hatch and the openness in the back. The one thing about you know this, I like that it's open, but this rudder when it's closed does need to be here. You can kind of hit this and have this just resting upwards, but it's not really how it's intended. So you're losing some storage. Um, and that's a big deal, especially in a 10 foot boat, but that's a big deal in any kayak. You're dealing with limited space. It's a big deal. So I, I, I would personally recommend the Hobie. Now the flip side of that is, is if you're looking for a value and maybe this is the top of your budget, get this boat. You will not be disappointed at all. It's fast, it's pretty darn nimble for not having the 360 drive. And compared to all the other boats on the market, this is hands down one of my favorite. And those old towns are bulletproof and they're built to last. Those are my all op overall opinions. Those are my thoughts. That's a walkthrough on both of those boats. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Um, I certainly learned a ton fishing out of both these boats. And then please let me know which one you like better. Go ahead, leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this boat. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I did put some time into this, so I'm happy to answer as many of them as I can. Um, and I just wanted to say, thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, thank you for liking, subscribing, you know, notification bell, all that stuff. And uh, catch you on the next video. See you guys.